Okay, look, so this lighting is pretty ideal. I have a light source here and a light source here. And these create this shadow line right here. This is really ideal for um, trying to figure out where your form is at. A lot of people just like to have a, a light source straight on. And what ends up happening is uh, there's um, you know difficulty in seeing the form because you, you don't even see the nuances until it's like you know cast. So this light source is best. Okay. I just want to go over a couple of drapery sessions in drapery. You saw how I laid it on. Um, there's a book here, Edward Lane Terry, Modeling and Sculpting the Human Figure. It's your uh, little sculptor's Bible. Uh, this one here, I mean, he goes through how to lay drapery, how to copy it, that type of thing. This book is chock full of all kinds of information on sculpting, but there is a section on drapery. And there's also this one, George Bridgman. And he talks about the seven different types of folds. So we have diaper, zigzag, pipe, half lock, inner, drop, and spiral. So this book covers those types. Once you understand the nature of these types of folds, then you really begin to understand what's going on with the drapery. You know, on top of these books being your, my resources, your hopefully resources, also consider um, Alphonse Mucha. Alphonse Mucha drapes his models and fabrics all the time. And these aren't clothes, they're just fabric. So he wraps them to create uh, dynamic creases in the fabric, um, which creates movement. And he uses that because he's a uh, he was a uh, illustrator for products on the market: cigarettes, soap, olive oil, even uh, theater productions. And then to the point where he was in the uh, public landscape doing sculpture or not sculptures some sculpture but uh, illustrations paintings murals in public buildings so uh, he just used drapery to help um, promote the figure I mean look at this right it's just pulled tight around her and then he just puts costume jewelry on them and he has bouquet decorations that he would put on their hair. So he's a real source of inspiration for me. And I mean, if you learn anything from Alphonse Mucha, he uses his artistic license. There's the old guy. Anyway, they're gorgeous. You get the idea. So that was my inspiration for this piece to move forward through here. So that's, that's where I'm at with this. And I have these turntables set up and they seem sturdy enough. I hope that they hold up. But I have two turntables so I can keep looking at what I'm looking at. So yeah, these uh, calipers may come in very handy to see where points are if I need to. And I found if you have a hard time with your clay sticking to plaster, just put a little Vaseline on the plaster, try to rub it in, then wipe off any excess and the oil-based clay should stick to it. It has been for me. I like it.
So let me make myself a little vulnerable here for a second. Let me make myself a vulnerable. I'm gonna give you a quick shot at my setup here. So I have a, a lamp here. I'm not sure if the camera's catching that. Obviously you can see that one. Um, so this is where I'm at. This, at this point, is a lot of um, back and forth turning. So I get fixed working on this spot, making sure that my lines are proper. So when I go through these things, and then the, let's just say from this knee to um, where this fold splits, I'm just going to make a general reference here. 
So, you know, that, that uh, goes to say that I can either step this part up or this part, but just to make sure, let's just take it from the toe here to that spot. Okay. Boy, even less favorable. Okay, so I take that down a little bit. So let's just say from right about there. Eh, right about there. There, there. So I just want to show you what I'm doing here when I'm not on the camera. I mean, I can't keep the camera on for this whole thing. So I'm trying to figure out how to show you guys what's up without boring you to tears here. Uh, and when you're looking at it, try to keep the figures in the same direction. So. So let's just say, for example, I have, um, I want to know where this fold stops right here. So I'll get my calipers. You could probably use a compass if you wanted to. Your compasses, right? So you can do that, where that's going to be, and right there. And then I'd come over here and plant it the same way. So for me, just eyeballing this, I'm doing a fairly decent job. But then when I move to the side here, you see this right here? This is not doing the same thing. So um, I must have got caught looking at it from some angle like this and was moving in that direction. And uh, I didn't take the time to change it and rotate it back to see that this actually needs built up a little more. And again, I want to make sure that this angle is squared up. You can use this point, that point, points in the hair before I take my measurement. But yeah, I can see where that needs to come out right there. So what I'm going to do is not turn it back to the front. I'm going to leave it on the side here and build it up. So this is what you do for portraits also when you're doing someone's portrait, whether it's in person or with a photograph. Work with their profile. Set their profile. Have them sit there. Work from the side to build their face out. I must have bumped that. See, I'm already going out too far. Is that too thick? Okay, getting there. So I can keep doing these reference points. Use the same reference points that way. And then when I turn it back to the front, I can already see that that looks better. So I just wanted to share that with you, and this is just kind of like a little interlude, and I'm going to start to speed this back up.
So I just want to take a quick break uh, from the sculpting here. This is going to be a very busy video as far as editing. But I just want to take a moment to say that it's it's very important, at least from the camera angle, um, you know, so you can see, is that we really take visual measurements of and, and keep your hand consistent. I don't know where this is going to line up with the camera, but you want to make sure that your angles are good. And as you do, you'll spin it, and you'll see these, you know, you can... Um, just go across planes like that and look like you're just in the same ballpark and build from the side so that your eye when your eye is looking at the piece you can add on to the side to build it out to what your eye is seeing on this one so that's the key if you want to add some more stuff that's fine but make sure wherever you added it that you can turn it to that profile and see that it coincides and another thing you might want to do this one, I keep turning around on the board, it's not fixed. But you could have a line here and a line here just to keep yourself always as parallel as you can. And the last thing I want to mention here is be sure that you are looking straight down. Because you can go back through and you know, lean in take a look straight down and then come back and look straight down and you'll see discrepancies. You'll start to say like this here, this is something I just noticed, where her spine is. Well, there's a crease that's just past that. So I had the crease before it or at it. So I took the crease and moved it over. And then I could do a whole lot of adjusting and pieces just started falling into place. And you can see that, like this here has more of a curve from the above, even though it's a straight line this way. So I can use that, for example. It's a straight line here, but from above, it's missing that curve. If there's an area that you want to dig into, try to use a loop tool to get in there. And the, the surface is going to be, like, not finished at all. But this is to allow you to get in there and remove material without having to dig. Because when you use your thumb, you're pushing the clay as you pull out. And this, you can actually cut it like an old uh, Velveeta cheese slicer type thing. And um, that works. So rolling edges, like when I apply a new layer, I can use this tool and just kind of smear it over. And then I can see a gap there, and then I can add a little more to it and do a little more smooth. That actually works in my favor a little bit because there's a dip. But, so that's all I'm really doing at this point. 